excited to see what advice and results you have for me. How did things turn out? Uh, before getting started, let's recap where we ended the last meeting. We looked at plots of the raw data, the fin length measurements on individual fish, organized by tank, which is the experimental unit, and by technician who did the measuring. Right, but I can't remember what you mean by experimental unit. The fish should be the experimental units, right? Well, in your design, the treatments, which are a combination of water temperature and hormone level, were randomly assigned and applied to the entire tank of 10 fish, not separately to each individual fish. Well, temperature and hormone levels are controlled within the tanks, but I was thinking that the sample size for my analysis was the total number of fish. We only have 30 tanks available at the lab, and it's just a logistics thing. Are you saying that our sample size could never go over 30 for any experiment? I don't see how I'm supposed to get published with just three per treatment. To have 30 independent replicates per treatment would actually require 30 tanks per treatment. Uh, on the positive side, having multiple fish per tank does help. It increases precision in your estimates of treatment comparisons because of averaging over 10 fish, so you can get away with fewer tanks than you could if you only had one fish per tank. Well, thanks for the positive spin, but I'm still confused. Other people use individual fish all the time. I don't really understand what the big deal is. Have you ever heard of the term pseudo-replication? I have, but I don't really understand it. Your experiment is actually a classic example. The tanks are the true replicates because of how the treatment is applied, and the fish are the pseudo-replicates. Pseudo-replication occurs when we assume that we have more independent pieces of information about the treatment comparisons than we actually do, uh, artificially inflating the sample size by using fish instead of tanks. It can lead to overstating precision in results. Uh, for example, confidence intervals may be misleadingly narrow and p-values smaller than they would be with true replication. Huh. Well, that doesn't sound like a bad thing. When we look at the plots of data by tank, there are clearly systematic differences among tanks within the same treatment. Uh, see how the measurements from the fish in tank 2 are clustered together relative to those from tank 3? It would be very hard to argue that it's reasonable to treat the fish as if they represent independent applications of the treatments. Um, I'm not really sure how to handle this. Am I supposed to tell the lab that I was wrong about the sample size? Plus, I don't even know how to do the analysis. This was supposed to be an easy two-way ANOVA. Well, maybe we can discuss expectations for analysis with your advisor. If it helps, I can also provide some references on experimental design and pseudo-replication. Hello. Uh, did you have a chance to meet with your lab group and talk about the pseudo-replication issue? Yeah, I tried to relay the information and show them the plots, but unfortunately it didn't go over well. I'm impressed with all the work you did, but I'm just not sure your suggestions will fly. We typically use the individual fish in the analysis, and everyone understands that. If I use a different approach, then I'm worried that my paper won't be accepted. I see. That puts you in a difficult situation. If I am a co-author, as discussed in the first meeting, then I would write the justification. I would, I would respond to any reviewer concerns. A benefit of collaborating with a statistician. Thanks. I do appreciate it. But I think it seems safest to have the quantitative person in our lab just run the usual analysis. Sorry about this. How about we include you as co-author to help pay for the work you've done so far? It would also help us to have a statistician on the paper. I appreciate the acknowledgement of the work that I've done. Uh, however, to be a co-author, I have to agree with the statistical approach as well as everything else in the paper. If I were to accept this co-authorship, it would violate the ethical guidelines of my profession. Wow, that's a little harsh, but I guess it's up to you. I just have to think about my career. I don't see this as unethical. 
I'm just doing what I was taught and what's expected of me. Well, thank you for being direct. I hope you will be able to use the information about pseudo-replication in your future experimental designs and analyses. And if you change your mind, please don't hesitate to reach out to me.